We are now at lab number two of this request smuggling workshop. We are going to look at a scenario where the proxy is supporting HTTP2 and is converting all messages to HTTP1. So in this scenario, we have the main proxy here that is uh, over TLS because this is mandatory for um, uh, HTTP2. We have our first application, the main one. So if you look at Docker Compose uh, log, when you uh, start the infrastructure, you will see the uh, name web main. And we have a second application or microservices uh, called uh, just a web static that here uh, is serving a static file. So images and uh, style sheet. So the way the proxy works is that uh, it has been configured so that uh, all the static uh, resources, so everything that is followed by static will be forwarded to the second application while the all other requests, requests will be uh, forwarded to the first one. Um, so to do further testing, I'll select one of the uh, requests here, intercept to the proxy. So make sure you don't target port uh, 100, uh, one, uh, 8001 and 8002. These are uh, port for troubleshooting or just seeing directly the, the each application. But for exploitation, you should always target the proxy on 8443. So first, I need to change uh, the original method to from uh, get to post be able to use a data frame in HTTP2. Uh, for the data frame, you can copy a uh, part of the payload in code labs. So the request is similar to this. So what you need is a valid method, then a path. So here I'm just going to use a random path. And then uh, HTTP 1.1 is really important because um, this part needs to uh, stay as is in the final uh, request. So the host name is not super important here because uh, both application or microservices, they simply ignore the uh, host header. So any will work uh, just easier, but uh, keep in mind, you should either use local host or uh, the host of the main website. So. I'll be sending uh, this request with one additional detail here where I'll be adding a contentlet header with the value zero here. And what it's going to do is that uh, in HTTP2, you don't need to specify a contentlet header because uh, in practice, this is a header frame that is this will be converted to an, a binary, binary form for HTTP2 as header frame. And uh, this will be a data frame. And both frames have uh, a length specified. But because we're, we know that uh, the proxy will do some conversion and attempt to convert it back to HTTP1, uh, we want uh, this conversion to be uh, confused and uh, create two requests instead of one. So uh, this will be converted to a, a similar request with HTTP 1. And because of the content line header, this will start in a second request for uh, in our HTTP stream. So if I'm sending this payload or request, and I open uh, and I look at uh, Docker Compose. So uh, this is the log that you can see. So you will see plenty of uh, requests already uh, with add. Uh, this is uh, basically just the proxy doing um, monitoring of, on each of those uh, small services, microservices. So uh, we can see the effect of our HTTP request. It was convert to uh, HTTP 1 uh, message. And we can see that, in fact, it produced post request to uh, just root and then uh, get request to test 1234. So this confirms us 
that uh, indeed is working, uh, there is some request smuggling. What we will need next is to do a second request and test if uh, we can get the response from uh, this test one two three four because we want to to be post potentially access um, a blacklist uh, URL or maybe access a monitoring API um, or uh, potentially bypass a WAF so if there are some uh, filtering done to the different parameter. So here I'm going to re oh, oops, let's remove this one. But from this request, but in practice it will not work um, even though there we've seen it in the log because we need to be super quick uh, and not uh, a few seconds, but uh, in terms of less than a millisecond to, to make it work on the, uh, the specific proxy. So for this reason, we cannot send a request and then uh, send a second one on burp. Uh, this will not work. For this reason, I've prepared um, a script that will do uh, the, uh, the same thing. So uh, you'll see, you'll have access to the same exploit script that I'm showing. So it's using the library uh, HTTPX that uh, behave uh, a lot like a request if you're familiar with the request from Python. Uh, this is another library in Python supporting HTTP2. And uh, the key thing you need to, to check in the exploit is that first I've add a header called content land here that is added and uh, I'm specifying as a data frame uh, the smuggle request that will be uh, just a, a get like we've done here uh, and here the target URL will change and then right away we do a second request uh, to fetch another URL and uh, this will be the, the place where we'll either test to confirm that there is a request smuggling from a black box perspective um, uh, if we get the response from the the smuggle request this confirms us that uh, we can exploit it if we receive when triggering the request the just the normal response then uh, it's not exploitable at least not this uh, specific variant and if we're looking at the how to uh, use the exploit script you have to specify the name of the script the host will be the proxy destination so this is uh, the what is exposed uh, to uh, most user URL1 is the uh, is the, this request here um, the main request and the, the smuggle request here will be URL1 S so you'll see uh, this second argument so here we'll do uh, in the second request second HTTP request URL2 to a path that we know is will return a 404 so this way it's a it's an easy test we do two requests and based on the response of the second request if we get a 404 this means there's nothing uh, to exploit but if on the other end we do a second request and suddenly we get for example a star sheet this means that um, we we have indeed uh, we can confirm a request smuggling so I'll do this and right away we can see that uh, uh, the first request return uh, uh, 200 and the second request also return 200 this means that we didn't receive uh, the not found but we received the response from the uh, the smuggle request here basically and uh, our exploit script is 
displaying the response, so just the, the key uh, part, the body. Um, what we can do is, from now on, is uh, we can potentially uh, do requests that would be filtered by maybe uh, the, the proxy, by uh, if there are some Wafru enable, or maybe if there are some blacklist path. Here we are going to use a path that is theoretically not accessible. So this document uh, folder is theoretically not accessible because uh, we need to fetch only uh, the only type of the only uh, paths that are forward to the second application always start with static. But uh, because we can initiate uh, a connection to the second application by starting a request with static, then we can uh, do a, a, a second request to the same host with any path. And this is what we'll uh, exploit with the, this specific script. So what I'll change here, so not found doesn't change. We could actually put any URL because we know that we'll receive uh, the response for the fir the this this request. So here, instead of uh, fetching a style sheet or an image in the static directory, I can now uh, fetch the flag.txt on the second application here, um, and I'm receiving uh, the content of this document. So we have confirmed with a kind of an oracle. Uh, if it was exploitable, and then we can, uh, not that we have confirmed the vulnerability, we can now uh, brute force uh, additional path on uh, specific on the specific uh, services. If the proxy is vulnerable, uh, be aware that you can target multiple uh, microservices. What you'll need to uh, keep in mind is that the first URL here, the URL one, is always the target uh, microservices. So if you target, um, if I have removed the static uh, prefix, the document slash flag will not be forward to the right um, server. Because keep in mind, the proxy thinks it's only forwarding one request and here it's forwarding two requests to the same application instead of one. So this was uh, exercise number two uh, for the, the workshop. In the next, wor next workshop, we're gonna see a variant with a WebSocket.